So my name is Ulrich. I'm from Switzerland. I work for a WordPress agency, a UX agency in Switzerland, um, but get to work remotely um, from my home. I also co-organized the meetup in my area in Bern and also run a website uh, selling themes on WP Zoom. And this is what I'm going to be talking about today, the case study of this site that I built with my friend. So Stefan and I, uh, Stefan came to me, had a theme he'd built and wanted to sell online. And so we thought we'd build an e-commerce site together. So for this, this is the site that we built, uh, WP Sue, to sell our own themes and plugins. So for this, for the e-commerce plugin, we chose Easy Deal Downloads also known as EDD. And this seemed to be an ideal product for us because our themes and plugins are digital, so we don't have any stock or we don't have any physical products. So that's why we chose this instead of WooCommerce. As both of us speak English and German, we thought it would be a good idea to have it multilingual so that we could also reach everyone around the world who spoke English but also were able to help people from our area, so Switzerland, Germany, and Austria, who also understand German and prefer to have used German. And so we could also provide them support in German. For the multi multilingual, we chose Polylang, as it's lightweight and fast, simple to use. It also has regular updates, so whenever there's a new WordPress for release with their update compatibility uh, improvements, their regular new features coming in the plugin, and that's a positive thing for us. One thing that also chose me for me to choose Polylang is that there's no custom tables. So it uses WordPress core features to link the posts and make sure that it works fast and simply. Another thing is that it has separate posts for translations. So I have an example here. So when you create a post in Polylang, it creates, for English, you would create one ID. And then when I go and write another post in German, it would give it a new ID, and that would be ID 10 in this example. And that's the same thing with downloads. So if you'd have a download or a product, it would create an ID for an English and an ID in German. But as I was thinking about this, I saw a problem. So I have one product, but suddenly I have two versions, one in English and one in German. So then I thought a bit further that this might also affect sales. So what happens if I have a sale in an English product? Then I'm not seeing these sales in the German product, but they're both the same product. And I mean, if we had physical products, then we'd have also a problem of stock wasn't a thing in our case, but it was also something I was thinking in the future. So the solution that I came up was from thinking what content needs to be translated in a download. I mean, there's description, but there's also data like prices, the download link, and like those, and those don't need to be translated. So I created a list, and there was only actually two things. So the product description and product notes that need to be translated. So the solution that we came up was to create a custom post type. So it should be loading in a minute. So a custom post type, there we go. And here, so you can see on the left hand side is all our product information. And then on the right hand side, we created a drop down to choose the product that we wanted to use. So we have a custom post type that has all the translations, and then we have a single product which just contains all the relevant information for that product. So on the front end, we've also got, again, on the left-hand side, the marketing material explaining our product, what it is. And then on the right-hand side, on the top right-hand side, you can see the checkout field. So people can just click on this, they go through the checkout process, gets added, we have a sale, and all the sales are listed up in one product. So there's no splitting of it. 
And a posit another positive side effect from creating a custom post type was that we wanted to have two product types. So themes and plugins. So by creating this custom post type, we have a list of all of our themes on one page, so under EN themes. And on the other, for all our plugins, we've got all our listed of plug all listed plugins. And if we wanted to do it with like categories and then have to write re custom rewrite rules, it would be a lot more complex. And this way we fix two things in one go. And then also an example of the product page. So you have the category beforehand and then the, the product name at the end. And it becomes easier for the user to see where they are on the site. But this was about a year ago when I was working on this. And in the meantime, there have been a few new products coming onto the market, like Polly Lang has created a new multilingual connector plugin to work with WooCommerce. And I was talking actually to the developer last weekend, and so he does it differently. He syncs the data from one, so he has two posts for each language, and so he syncs them across. So if he has a sale in the English product, he syncs the sale also to the German product, so they both replicate the same information. Another method that I've heard of is also just calculating the total of both products. These are different ways that different solutions have done it. Mine was just to split the content from the real data because that was the easiest and quickest solution for me. Another thing that's important is knowing what language the user prefers or your customer. So your customer lands on your website, then they get redirected according, depending on their browser language, operating system language, or their location. And so they go through the checkout process, they look at your product, they add it to the cart and go through. Now that's an important point where you need to make a note of what language they're using on the site. Because you're gonna send them transactional emails, like thanking them for the pro, uh, purchase, or you're going to send them the download link or the shipping ID or something like that. So you want to have that also translated so that it's a unique and unified experience. Another section is newsletters. As we both speak English and German, my colleague and I, so we can also write our newsletters in German and English. So by having in the newsletter sign-up form a language option, so they get the newsletter in the language that they prefer. Another thing that we had when we were going through it is translations. In some pa this is a logical step, but I felt that not every step was always clear. So it's clear that you have to translate your content. You know, you have your content in English and your German, and you need to translate both of it. But the next step is also making sure those little strings in the plugin are also translated correctly. Sometimes you have a, a string from the theme that's like posted on, so you have a post and it says posted on. So those are hard coded sometimes in the theme. And so you need to translate those too. A way to do that easily is to, if a theme is publicly available on wordpress.org, you can translate it on translate.wordpress.org. Or sometimes you have, if you have written custom code, you have to do those manually. Another place is settings. So I have a few examples here. So this screenshot is taken from the Polylang string translation module. And so we have a section here like the title that we call WeepyZoo, so the company name. This is something we've not translated because it's not necessary. But then like our tagline is something that we translate. Or maybe the date format is different in English or from U the UK to Switzerland and Germany. And so we use the Polylang translation module to translate these settings. Another place special to EDD is the checkout pages. There are custom pages that the plugin creates when you install the plugin. And you might have some text, special text on that page um, for the checkout. So the problem is the WordPress settings API just saves the post ID of that single page, be it in English. And so when you go to the German page, the system is loading the English page. 
So then I had to write some custom code to make sure that this was synced properly and the correct page was loaded according to the page that the customer was on. And like I mentioned before, with the preferred languages, we talked about the transaction emails. And th these are some of the settings that EDD has for these emails. And so these need to be translated also correctly. And there's certain ways that you hook into the uh, options API and that you can register these settings to be added into the polylang string translation module, which we saw previously. And another one, the last one in EDD is with the currency. So do you add the symbol, the currency symbol before or after the currency, the value, or thousands and decimal separators? I know they're different depending on the language and preference. Another one that I actually got into discussion at the last WordCamp I was at was multiple currencies. In our case, we were just using Swiss franc to charge our clients. And I found out that it's not that easy to have different charge in different currencies. And it's normally easier just to provide a uh, current exchange rate that is being used so that when the client lands on your website, they can get an estimate of how much it costs in their currency, but you end up having to charge in your own. And then another one is contact forms. This is relatively simple and there's not really a lot of complication to it, you just end up creating um, a contact form for both languages. And that's what we've done our, on our site for the contact, so that all of the labels and all of the buttons and everything is in the correct language. So that is a unified experience for the customer. One problem that I came across when wanting to have the same URL for both products be it the, for the English version or the German version, was that the plugin I chose, Polylang, did not support having this. So I ended up having to create a custom plugin for this, which I released on GitHub. Um, it's called Polylang Slug. And that fixes that problem. So it allows you to have the same word in the URL, regardless of the language. And recently, Polylang Pro was released, which also fixes this problem. And they also fix the problem with taxonomy. So if you have a category with the same name, then that fixes that too. Um, but I needed a solution at that time for our website, so I ended up having to develop it. But it's one of my most um, liked uh, repos on GitHub. Um, so you may be wondering, I mean, what have you all done and what's all the custom code? So I released a, a plugin for EDD, Polylang, a connector plugin, which does a lot of the things that we talked about today. So it's available on GitHub. I haven't put it on WordPress.org yet because I'm only, I am think I'm the only one using it on my site. And as soon as I get more feedback from people, and I'm sure that it will work for a number of people, then I'm happy to release it on WordPress.org. So that's from me today. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, I think we have some time for uh, questions. Uh, so we're going to pass around this epic uh, catch box. Uh, it's basically a mic that you can throw around. So do we have anyone eager for a question? Everything's clear. Perfectly clear. So we'll see a lo lot of e-commerce sites being set up after this. Yeah, uh, I have a question for myself. Uh, if you would have done this project today, uh, considering uh, the involvement of WooCommerce and uh, easy digital downloads and the other language plugins, etc., is there something you would have done differently compared to uh, what you did back then? Um, I think I wouldn't have had to develop a few of the custom plugins that I did um, today. Um, I would perhaps wonder how it would happen with syncing between two. The, so if I have a sale on the English product, that the same data will be synced on the German product. Um, I'm not sure which one is easier, but at the time, 
it was easier to split the two things. Yeah. And it was ideal. It was better with like the, the URLs and everything worked out better in the end, the way we did it. Uh, was there something you felt that you missed in uh, Easy Digital Downloads? Or um, they had actually, I needed a few things changed in the plugin so that some of the, uh, the API worked correctly with the syncing and the settings and all that. But uh, And we have a question from the audience. Uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to hold this. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, you, you talked about uh, multi-currency uh, there, and you yourself and are only using one currency. Yes. But are there any extensions for EDD that enables multi-currency? No, okay. at the moment not. And I think it's a quite a complicated issue. There was a question at the back. Yep. It's at the very back. Okay. Yes. So are you handling uh, selling to other countries? So. Have, do you have to handle the EU VAT MOS stuff and things like that? Yeah, uh, we're handling it. You are handling it. <laughs> How? <laughs> um, we've got a, a plugin from a, something as a British-based, UK-based um, site that they do the VAT MOS, and so we registered with uh, with Germany, and so we get every quarter an email from them with an Excel file. And then we just have to put in the values of the sales that we made to every country. And at the end, it gives us a total of how much we owe them. And then we just have to do a bank transfer. But we are allowed to send them the Excel file via fax, email, or post. Thank you. I think we have time for one or two more questions. One question. Oh, sorry. Did you encounter any like search engine optimization challenges when using this plugin or creating your own solutions for this? Um, I think Polylang does a good job. Um, it does a like proper connection between the different languages and everything. Um, so I don't think there should be any problems with SEO because WordPress, as of Google, then knows when it lands on the site that there's a translation version of that site in another place. Um, yeah. And we have a question here on the other side. So this, this was fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just want to know uh, the reason why choosing Polylang instead of uh, WPML. Well, um, I think yeah, because WPML uses custom tables, and it's an older solution. They have a lot more um, back out of old code which they need to rewrite and like that. And it's yeah. easier then for me to you choose a plugin that is simpler, and perhaps less feature rich, but th I have a good contact with the developer also of that plugin and get, we use it for a number, like uh, at our agent, uh, the agency re required where I work, we also use it there. And so, um, yeah, when you start working with a certain com uh, another plugin company or something, then you have a good relationship and it's easier to get f fixes in and things like that. Thank you. And we have one more question here. It's not really a question, but uh, just a, a comment on the question to the in regards to SEO compliance. Uh, it's a, just a tip that you can go into Google Webmaster Tools and specify the different languages of your website. So if you have a subfolder, subdomain, or so on, uh, to make sure that uh, Google sees it as different websites, then you will not have a problem with the the SEO. Okay, you, thank you. Did you follow, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think we should all give a big and warm applause to Ulrich. Thank you. And before you leave the stage, I would like to give you this gift uh, huh? on behalf of uh, WordCamps Sweden. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat>